So um, what the Lord, one of the things that the Lord uh, really spoke to me about today was to speak on healing, all right? And uh, the Lord, the Bible has a lot to say about healing, but even before I do that, tomorrow's the last day of Hanukkah, and uh, we're going to start in the month of Tevet, uh, T-E-V-E-T, -E -E and, and usually we have handouts on the back there to explain each month. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, like a goalpost. It's something that gives us guidance for each month. And um, our friend, and she's been here, Christine Bowles, um, she um, created these cards, and, and you can get them online, and she has a wonder. She does the chalkboard teaching. How many of you have ever seen that online? And she's so good, so I love that. So I really encourage you to check it out. But um, that's going to start uh, this week. I think it's going to start on Tuesday or Monday. I'm not sure. But um, I love reading this because the monthly characteristics, and there, there are scriptures to meditate on, and it really helps guide us, right? And so one of the things is leap out of fear and passivity, if that's not a word of the Lord. Stand for your inheritance. Evaluate your seat in heavenly places. Declare the word of the Lord. Let, your, let, the, let the word of God be a lamp unto your feet. Get focused and put your priorities right? And follow his lead. And it's a month of growth and, and maturity. So, you know, the Lord has been speaking to us. I mean, most of you are saved a long time, but maybe some of you are not. We've got to be in an intimate place with the Lord. We've got to hear the word of the Lord. We've got to meditate on the word. And you're going to always hear me say this because we don't know what's coming up. But the Lord's saying to us, don't get ambushed. Be prepared. Be ready for what the spirit of the Lord wants us to flow in. Oh, my. I don't know. He keeps calling me. Um, here, maybe you need I, it. Yeah, sure. Can I also just, I forgot yeah. to say something. Um, we have the healing rooms uh, that's going to be here uh, this, sun, this uh, Saturday that's coming up, which is at 20 Church Street where our uh, church offices are. And that means that there's a team of people that have been trained and been doing this for years. We didn't do it during COVID, but we're doing it now. So if you know anybody that needs physical healing or emotional healing, we have an amazing group of people that are there that are trained, that pray. Um, and we're going to do that once, once a month and maybe more down the road. Who knows? But I, I should have mentioned that sooner. So sorry about that. Good. Hey, could you check it out and see who's calling? Yeah. They keep calling. Okay. Thanks. Check it out. <laughs> She's got a lot of fans. I just can want I to see who's no, but you can, like, okay. All right. <laughs> so anyway, so during worship, I just wanted to release this. Um, when Carolyn was praying in, in the spirit, I, I was hearing from the scripture from Joel chapter 2, and it was verse 11, and, and it was, The Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can abide? Therefore, also now says the Lord, turn even unto me with all your heart and with all your fasting and with your weeping and your mourning. It says, and rend your heart, not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious, merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, and repents of evil. And so the Lord is, is really wooing us, and he's trying to get the word to us that to rend our hearts. We can't be indifferent any longer. And God is here to heal our hearts. I'm going to speak on physical healing today, but as you know, God wants to emotionally heal us. And Diana, you had a word about what you saw. Come up here and just release that, and then I'll, I'll get the message going. I just want to follow the flow of Holy Spirit today. So I wrote it down. Uh, during worship, I had seen um, that there have been many labels that have been placed on us, right? So it could be someone has spoken over your life, like, you're a liar, cheater, you know, you're this, you're that. And these are the labels that kind of get stuck on us. There's also word curses that, ha that have been spoken over us. Again, those nevers. You will never amount to anything. You will never find a man. You would never do this. You would never get married. And again, these are curses that are being spoken over us. And sometimes, um, you know, we speak those curses over ourselves, and sometimes others speak it over us. And so the Lord showed me that these words and these curses have dried on us like paint. And like there's layers at times, right, depending on what the word, those words have been. But he also showed me that there's this solution. There's, there's, there's paint stripping solution, okay? And so when you think about the paint and you think about the solution, you have to 
use that little tool to strip it off, right? And so he showed me that, you know, God, Jesus, and his Holy Spirit is the master paint stripper. And he can strip the layers of painful words and curses that have dried on us like layers of old paint. Okay, so I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will put his master stripping solution on us and that he will strip away by, by the power of his word, by the power of his truth, by the power of, of, of just like just his healing power, that he would take those, uh, those difficult uh, and layerful uh, paint strips of word curses uh, of, and that labels off of us, and that he would put his healing balm on us, and that he would create that beautiful, as he is a wonderful carpenter, that, those furniture pieces that are just like flawless. And that's what we are, flawless in him. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So we have to come out of agreement with the lies. We have to come out of agreement with where the enemy has tried to tell you you're, you're never going to change. You're never going to mount anything. You'll never get healed. You'll never have deliverance. You have to come out of agreement with that. All right? So, Lord, we just thank you that you are the way maker. And because of the power of the blood of Jesus, because of the cross, because of how brutally beaten you were, that you died on the cross for our freedom, and so, Lord, we decree we are the healed of the Lord, and we are free in Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, when I was praying about today, the Lord said to me that, he said, listen, I want to activate my healing power in everyone. Do you know we're all healers? Oh, <laughs> my husband has, I'm thinking he's waving to me too. Um, and so we're all healers. We all have healing power. And so, and I want to go through, there's certain scriptures here that I just absolutely love studying. And I just want to encourage you in that because, you know, we, we still aren't out of this virus thing. And, um, you know, and, and the Lord needs us. He needs us to stand and decree the word of the Lord, but also be a believer and pray for people. And, um, and, and, you know, we've seen many people healed. And so I just want to encourage you today, okay? So we want to break down the barriers for healing, all right? So obviously we don't have any powers in, our, in ourselves, but it's because of our alignment with Jesus, right? We're all called to lay hands on the sick, and you'll see in the scriptures. So you may not feel qualified, but thank God we have Holy Spirit within us that will guide and lead us, amen? So in Psalm 103, 2 through 3, it says, Bless affectionately and gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one forget not one of all his benefits, who forgives every one of our iniquities and who heals each one of our diseases, okay? So he, when you look up that word forget, it means don't ignore it. It means don't be oblivious to what the promises of God are. That's our responsibility, right, to know what the word of the Lord says. And, uh, and again, it's good to rehearse all this. I know a lot of us are saved a long time, but we need to rehearse the word of God and get a fresh revelation because every time you meditate on it, Holy Spirit shows you something new, right? And so to, to his benefits, how many of you have a benefit package in your company that you work for? And Lord knows you want to read to know when you get your vacation days. You want to know, you know, your sick days. You want to know what's due to you. Well, the Bible's saying here we have benefits in here because of the covenant of God that we are called to, you know, the Lord says there's a covenant for us for healing and for deliverance and for prosperity and for safety. That's our covenant. And to stand upon the word. And so when we are going through these things, it seems difficult because when you're worrying about something, when you're in the midst of a problem, it, it can be challenging, right? And so no one's saying you don't have emotions and you don't get concerned about what's going on or you don't even feel fear, even though the Bible says fear not, right? But how many times, even as we're standing upon the word, we feel that emotion of fear, right? That doesn't mean you're not in faith. That means you're just standing there in faith, even though they, there's a war with your flesh and your spirit, but you're standing there trusting God, amen? Amen. Because the Bible says that he has not given us in 1 Timothy a spirit of fear, right, but of power, love, and of sound mind. There's over 365 scriptures on fear. And how many of us know that what, what happens to all of us? We get afraid. Things happen. 
But that doesn't mean that you're not in faith. Let me just uh, you make sure you understand it. It means that you're not backing down. It means that no matter what, even though I may feel this way, I am standing on the word. Because the Bible says that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. The Bible says that he will never leave me nor forsake me, right? So we know we war with the word. So um, he heals us, and that word heal there is rafa, and it means to make healthful, to heal, to mend, to cure, to thoroughly make whole. That's his goal for us. You may say, well, I have prayed, and I didn't get healed. But, you know, how many of you were here when Delia Knox uh, spoke here? All right. So she was in a, we, we used to co-host for TBN, and she was in a car accident, and her pelvic was crushed. She was in a wheelchair, and when we interviewed her, she was nine years in her wheelchair. And so I thought, Lord Jesus, and she had so much joy on her face. She really did. And she said, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be healed. And I thought, well, praise God. Amen. But, you know, in the back of your mind, you're thinking, maybe she's just being a little, you know, out there with her faith, right? How many times do we think they're, they're too extreme, right? Well, I'm just telling you, I'm extreme. But... But I was wondering with her, and I thought, oh, Lord Jesus, would I have that much faith? Well, I'm going to tell you something. We were in Alabama, and she had been praying and declaring every single day, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to drive a Lexus. I'm going to wear, you know that designer with the red soles? I can never say his name. Who? Him. And so, <laughs> I don't know what his name is. Anyway, she said, I'm going to wear those kind of shoes, and I'm going to do this. And she kept prophesying over herself, even though she wasn't experiencing any kind of healing. Twenty-two and a half years later, she's in a service with John Kilpatrick and some other young uh, minister, and, and who? Nathan... Morris. And so what happened was she decided... The moment they started to pray, I'm not staying, I'm leaving. She said, I have been flipped, I have been flopped. People have prayed over me. And she goes, I actually felt bad for them because I wasn't getting healed. So she said, but what happened was all of a sudden, some lady came up and brought a, a, an infant that had kidney issues. And she said, I felt such compassion for this baby. She said, and as I'm looking at it, and she said to my husband, get me out of here. I don't want these people praying for me. It's a healing service. I don't want them praying for me. She said, she started to feel tingling in her legs. Now, if you're paralyzed, you know you don't feel tingling in your legs, right? And she said to her husband, oh, my God. She says, I'm starting to feel something in my legs. So they, they got her, and they started praying. And this is all. You can, you can go on YouTube and see all this. And, and so they're helping her walk. Now, there's atrophy. She's in the wheelchair for 22 and a half years, right? And so she gets healed. And so then after that, she's totally flipped out and thinking, oh, my God, is this for real? And basically went home because she was afraid. You know, we have crazy emotions, don't we? And she went home and stayed in bed for a month. And so John Kilpatrick and, and Nathan, they had to go and say to her, you are healed, you know? And so then we were in Alabama, and she has a twin sister. And I'm standing there, and I said to Peter, is that Delia Knox? At the time, it was, she was Delia Roman. And she came out wearing her shoes with the red souls and and her high and came out because she's a singer she used to travel with Shirley Caesar and I mean God performed a miracle I'm telling you we don't have to wait 22 and a half years the suddenlies of the Lord are here amen but she decreed she prayed she said I'm not backing down her sister said to us that when she would drive her car she had all the the remote and everything was up on the dashboard she wouldn't let anybody help her and she said, I'm doing it myself. And she would get in. And she said, her sister said, it would take like 30 minutes before we got somewhere. We're like, please let us do this so that we don't have to wait for you. But she was insistent. And she said, no, I am telling you, this is how I'm getting my healing. The Lord told me, and I'm praying, and I'm believing, and I'm trusting God. See, we can't give up. We cannot give up. Because what does the enemy do? He wants us to focus on what's not happening but you know the scripture in Romans, we call those things which be not as though they are, right? You call it into the now. You say, oh, well, that's crazy. No, was it crazy for her? Listen, most of us would have told her, honey, just sit down and be quiet. You know, come on, you're, you're, you're in a wheelchair this long? Yes, that's the God of the supernatural that we serve. So I want to really build your faith up, and I want to encourage you with the great I am and what he wants to do for us. Because I believe I, with all my heart, 
that we are going to see the supernatural healing power of God like what we, we would see in the past like this. And so it's like now, and I know people are getting healed. I know you are. But I mean, I'm just saying the suddenly, the, the supernatural. You talk about evangelism. You want to evangelize? Well, that's a way. But we can't just go by what we're feeling. We can't just go by what, like, oh, my God, it doesn't look like they're healed. Sometimes when you're preaching, if you see some of your faces, you think, Lord Jesus, oh my God, it was the worst message ever. And then some people will come up, that was such a word. I'm like, it was? You should have notified your face. But you see, that's what happens. We can't just look, go by what we see, even though we're natural beings, right? But the supernatural, our supernatural seeing sense needs to be developed. And it really does come to your presence, you know, being in the Lord's presence. But the word, you have to know what the word says, because then, then you get to seed. So in Psalm 68, 19, it says, blessed be the Lord who daily, daily, not once a week, daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. He's right there. He's daily, daily living. Are you, do you have, there was prayer this morning about expectation. Are you daily waiting and believing? In Mark 16, 50, I'm going to read a lot of scripture today. Um, it says, and he said to them, go into all the world, who? Us. Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. We're all believers here, right? Okay. It says, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. And they will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Isn't that good? And, and I like to meditate on this scripture because I know there have been people that have gotten a vaccine or very concerned because you had to or whatever your circumstance was and concerned about the effects of the vaccine. Here it goes. If you drink any deadly poison, if there's any deadly poison in you, he said, it will not hurt you. You, you speak the word of the Lord over you. Amen. And it says here now, again, there are many that have gotten the vaccine. They're doing fine, but some have been very concerned. So this is a good scripture. So then the Lord Jesus said, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by a company signs. All right, the next scripture here is Matthew 10, 7 through 8. And it says here, and proclaim as you go, saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. This is, this is our mandate. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leopard, and cast out demons. You receive without paying, give without paying. Listen to it. I didn't type it there, but I wrote it out here. And in Passion, it says, as you go, preach the message. Heaven's kingdom realm is accessible. Close enough to touch you must continually bring healing to leopards and to those who are sick and make it your habit to break off demonic presence from people and raise the dead back to life. Isn't that good? It says, make it your habit. It has to become your habit to do these things. Amen? And so the, the only way you're really growing it is by doing it. Ask Holy Spirit. When I got saved, I, I never even heard of the prophetic. I never heard of any of these things. We didn't have internet there. I got saved in 79. And so I would walk into a store and just say, Lord, is there anyone here you want me to speak to? And he would highlight a person. He'd give me a scripture. At the time, that was how it started. I just had a scripture. And then the Lord would then develop that. And, you know, people were really touched by that. I was just as, let me tell you, I think I was more touched than they were because when they received it and they were excited, I got excited. Like, wow, I really am hearing from the Lord. That's how we developed the gifting. We're all to lay hands on his leg. We're all to pray. We're, we're, his, we're his covenant children. And this is the, 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 the blessing. This is what he blesses us with. It's, it's, it's fun. It's awesome. And so in Romans, uh, no, I'm sorry, in 1 Corinthians 4.20, it says, for the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. I mean, we've done enough talking. And that word power there, and many of you know it's dunamis, which means strength, power, and ability, moral power, and excellence of soul. See, when, there, when there's healing that takes place, a lot of times when there's emotional wounding, it means that your soul uh, needs healing, right? But here he's referring to excellence of soul, moral character, that you're aligned with the Lord, that you're rooted in him and you're living a life honorable to him, amen? 
And so when, when, when the power is released, when the gospel is released, miracles happen. And so, again, uh, Linnell was praying about that today, about expectation. Do you have a heart of expectation, or are we going just through the motion of things? And the world needs us. Listen, the kingdom of God, this is a celebration service, but it's for what's out there. People need the Lord. Look at how many people are watching The Chosen. I, I, I have, oh, it's on my phone, but it's, it, was, it, it was rated number one over all the movies that are out there this week. Chosen. People are hungry. People want to know about Jesus. Amen? And we have the answer, so don't shy back. So if we jump to 1 John 3, 8, um, you can keep going. One of the ways that, G, you know, the, the scripture says that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. All right? So... Oh, my husband didn't include that. Okay. So, <laughs> one of the ways that Jesus destroyed the works of the devil was what? To minister healing. To minister deliverance. Right? The, the, see, we, we are a supernatural people. Every single one of us. You heard about the angels. Now, we don't worship angels, but the angelic is there in Hebrews 1. It talks about it and in other places to minister. They're, they're, they're ministers of fire. They're there. So we have to learn to access and just stop saying in the natural realm. And how does that happen? Again, through, our, through spending time with the Lord, through, through the meditation of the word. Because I don't know about you, it's boring if, if you're not flowing with Holy Spirit. Right? I mean, we can just stay home for all that. You know, I mean, just, you, you just want, you want Holy Spirit. You want all that he has for you. Now, in Mark chapter 4... Now, I know I didn't, I don't think I gave this to my husband. Did I give you that, Mark 4? No. Okay. So in Mark chapter 4, um, so is that all you did? You, you just did up to those scriptures? Okay. 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 So in Mark chapter 4, 35. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so I, I want to show you how Jesus meets us where we're at. And, I, you know, sometimes you may think that you have to have, you know, like, like raise 42 people from the dead before you can pray for other people. Listen, it's not the case. And so it says here on the same day when Jesus had, I said, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go over to the other side. So leaving the crowd, they took him. And now Jesus already told them, we're going to go over to the other side. And a fierce windstorm began to blow, and waves were breaking over the boat. And they were really afraid. And it says, but Jesus was in his stern, asleep with his head on the sailor's leather cushion. And they woke him and said, teacher, don't you care that we're about to die? Listen to their confession. And he got up and sternly rebuked the wind and said to the sea, hush, be stilled, and muzzled. And the wind died down as it had grown weary, and there was at once a great calm, a perfect peacefulness. Jesus said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith and confidence in me? And they were filled with great fear and said to each other, who is this guy? Even the wind and the sea obey him. See, as they're developing, as they were developing their walk with him, they, I mean, think about it. They were with Jesus and they were still afraid. So you see, we get afraid, but it means we keep pressing on. We keep, you know, trusting the Lord. When you step out and ask Holy Spirit for healing. And I'm, you know, I'm not planning on going here, but I'm going to do this real quick. In Matthew, in, in Mark 5, then when they crossed over to the other side, what happened? They were met with the, the maniac of Gadaria, right? The guy was demon-possessed, crazy as a bed bug. And so it says here in verse 2, And when he come out of the ship immediately, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. You know what that word tomb means? It's talking, it says, a recalling the memory of any person. That's what that word tomb means, where... A lot of times when there's, uh, you know, like in this particular guy's case, with him having this uh, emotional issue, actually it means to perpetuate the memory of any person or thing. When you focus on the wrong, when you focus on the bad that's been had, that will keep you in bondage. 
This guy was in a tomb. He was hiding out. He was an outcast. He was isolating. You may think, well, you know what? I have a right to be angry. I have a right to judge. No, you don't. Because you're the one that gets caught up in the tomb. You're the one that gets locked up emotionally. See, it hurts us. See, when the Lord's asking us to forgive, it's not because you're letting that person off the hook. God will deal with that. Because, but remember, God looks at the whole picture. He wants everybody healed. But it, it, it heals our heart. It keeps you in bondage if you don't forgive. It's a choice to forgive. It's a choice to release the unforgiveness and the bitterness. Amen? All right. So then um, in Mark chapter um, 1... Oh, you did. Okay, Mark chapter 1 and verses 40 to 42. Um, a man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. And he said to Jesus, if you're willing, you can heal me and make me clean. And he said, um, he was moved with compassion. Jesus reached out and touched him. And he said, I am willing. And he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared and the man was healed. So, this guy, it wasn't him just saying, hey, Jesus, listen, can you just heal me? He was desperate. He, it, when you look up the words, it means he was imploring him. He was just saying, look, I am determined. I, I've been battling with this thing. And it, when it, that word touched me, he literally grabbed hold of God. And he wasn't letting him go with Jesus. See, it's that heart of desperation. I'm not letting go until things shift. That's what I'm trusting the Lord for. And so <clears throat> we see that here. And then in Mark chapter, um, I guess you can go to Mark 9, because then we'll go to Mark 5. Uh, these are all different levels of faith. But I want you to know Jesus met everyone where they were at, okay? And I want to encourage you with this, because listen, we all have our 30, 60, 100, fold, we're all different places. But it doesn't mean God's not listening. It doesn't mean that God doesn't answer. And so in, in, it says here in uh, Mark 9, 17, one of the crowd replied to him, Teacher, I brought you my son possessed with a spirit which makes him unable to speak. And whenever it seizes him, intending to do harm, it throws him down and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes stiff. I told your disciples to drive him out, but they couldn't do it. And so you see, the father had doubts too, but he replied, Oh, unbelieving, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. Now remember, they were all hanging out with Jesus. And they brought the boy to him, and when the demonic spirit saw him, immediately he threw the boy into convulsions, falling to the ground, and he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, how long has this been happening? See, you interview the person, right? And since childhood, the demon has often thrown him both into the fire and water, intending to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, <laughs> all things are possible for the one who believes and trusts in me. That's a scripture you need to be declaring every day. All things are possible the, for, you know, for the one who believes and trusts in me. Immediately the boy cried out with a desperate piercing, crying, saying, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. See, I, I just think that's so beautiful how the Lord just met the father. He didn't say, well, you know, if you, if you just would read a little more, you know, like maybe next time I'll pray for you. No, he met him right where he's at. And, and so, but God is encouraging us, develop your faith, grow in your faith. Listen, I have studied these words, scriptures over and over, and every time I study, God gives me something else. It's just so powerful, right? It's for all of us. But when Jesus noticed that the crowd of people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying, you deaf and dumb spirit, I charge you to come out of him and never go into him again. And after giving a hoarse, clamoring, fear-stricken shriek of anguish and convulsing him terribly, it came out. And the boy lay pale and motionless like a corpse, so that many of them said, he's dead. But Jesus took a strong grip of his hand and began lifting him up, and he stood. And when he had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? And he said, okay, this kind comes out not by prayer and fasting, where you have to now, okay, we're going to kick this thing up. We're going to pray and fast. We're going to wait on the Lord. We're going to get a strategy from God. See, a lot of times we have to do that, all right? Now, in Mark chapter 5, 25 through 34, um, okay, all right, honey. There is a woman. Well, actually, um, let me see here. I, I, you have to meditate on all of Mark. It's just so powerful. I mean, I love it. And so in Mark chapter, let me see here. 
uh, 25, but I, I think Jarius came before that. But in Mark chapter, yeah, all right. In Mark chapter 5, 25, it says there was a woman who had a flow of, of blood for 12 years, all right? She was really struggling. And the thing was, in a rabbinical law, if you had any kind of, like, if you were a leopard, if, like, this woman had an issue of blood, she had to walk around and just say, unclean, unclean. You know, I mean, how shameful, right? And she, she wasn't allowed to participate and be in the community. And so that was the law. And so she could have been stoned to death. She could have been stoned had any of them uh, saw, saw where she was at. And so she didn't care. When you get to a place of desperation... I don't care. I'm going to do what it takes. I'm going to press in and pray. I'm going to pray even louder. I'm going to worship even louder. I'm going to pray in tongues even longer. You see, listen, God has called us to be fanatical Christians. If you're, if you're you know, he said, I'd rather you be hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, what it, he's going to vomit us out of his mouth. It's, there's, I'm telling you, it's, I don't know any other way to say it. If, you, if you're not really hot on fire for the Lord, you're going to have a real hard time moving forward. Right. I don't know exactly what's ahead, but I know there's a whole lot more shaking going on that's going to go on. And we have to know in whom we believe. And, and you know, God's with us, all right? And so she was really suffering. She was really going through a hard time. And it says here, and who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians and spent all that she had and was no better worse. She, she was worse. And it says here that she heard the reports concerning Jesus. What, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. She heard about it. And her hope came up. See, right now, there may be some of you that have been going through things a long time and your, your hope has weaned. The Lord is saying, no, don't, don't lose hope now. Now's not the time to give up. All right, now's not the time to give up. She heard the report concerning Jesus, and she came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment, and she kept saying, she kept speaking, you know, uh, just like Adelia Knox, she kept decreeing the word, if only I touch his garments, I will be restored to health. And when, when you study this out, um, like he wore the tallit, and, and when you touch the portion of it, it represented the word of God, right? So she's like, I'm touching the word. I'm not letting go of this. Because she said, if only I touch his garments, I will be restored to hell. And immediately her flow of blood was dried up at the source. And suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. And Jesus, recognizing in himself the power, proceeded from him. And he said, he turned around. He said, who touched my clothes? And, of course, the disciples were like, well, come on, Jesus, you have all this crowd all around you. And, and so he says, no, 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 I felt virtue. And, and she was afraid. And it says here, he kept looking, but the woman, knowing what had been done for her, though alarmed and frightened, that's why she was afraid, because she wasn't really allowed to be in, in, in you know, the group with this, these people. She fell down and, and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, your trust, your confidence in me, springing from faith in God, has restored you to hell. Go in peace and continually be healed and freed from your distressing bodily disease. All right? So, you know, that, and Jarius, I know he's here somewhere. Jarius um, also, you know, and what I love about uh, this, Jarius was also on his way. Jesus was gone with Jarius for his daughter to get healed. But what happened was, um, this woman then interrupted. And could you imagine how freaked out Jarius must have been? And, and so, but on the way, they said to Jarius that he said, listen, um, yeah, here it is. He said, you know, that they said to him, listen, your daughter's dead. And what did Jesus say? How many times when we get a bad report, that's what I'm saying, when the word is so one and so alive in you, they, he, Jesus turned and said, don't, don't listen to it. Only believe don't listen to this. Don't listen to the evil report you're receiving. Don't listen to it is what the Lord is saying. Don't listen to the lie of the enemy. Don't listen. Only believe. See, but what happens is it's not like you have a little magic rabbit's foot. It's the fact that you become one with the word. You're so one with the word that, that no one can tell you anything different. That's how powerful the meditation of the word of God is. And many of you know the story, and that's what happened when they said to me when I was pregnant that my son was dead. There was, there was nothing they could have said. 
that would have changed my mind. He's not dead. I don't care what you're saying. I don't care what your machines are saying. God promises. The word of the Lord said that I'm going to give birth to my son. And he's going to have, he's going to be whole and healthy. And he was. And so, you know, again, it was that warring. I mean, now, how many of you know that, that like the first time, and, and I know you've heard this, but I'm going to repeat it again. The first time when I, I was uh, giving birth, they said our son was stressed. And I'm like, oh, God, okay. You know, you get scared. You know, you hear these things. We're human, right? You're, you're at a doctor, and you're hearing these reports. It gets you scared. So they gave me a C-section. And I said, I am not going through that again. And, but the Lord spoke to me. He, see, I, you have to hear the voice of the Lord. And he said, I want you to meditate. With the second pregnancy, he says, I want you to meditate on the word for nine months. And I want you to speak the word over every part of your body for nine months. And, and I didn't even think I was going to go into have labor pains, but I did. But, but, but I didn't know. I didn't know that when I got to the hospital and when, when you know, I was in labor, I didn't know they were going to say our son was dead. They said, we, we have to give you an emergency section because there's no heartbeat. Now, how many of you know when you hear that stuff, it can freak you out? But I wanted my husband to punch the doctor in the nose because it got me so aggravated, you know? I'm like, don't you speak that over my baby. But see, that's what happens when the word becomes, I'm not encouraging you to punch anybody in the nose, I'm just saying, but when the word of God becomes so real to you, they couldn't tell me. I, it, it was like a righteous anger rose up. That is the power of the word of God. That's why we have to increase in that. We ha it's, it's just so, it's, it's, it's delicious. It's, it's as you're meditating on it. I mean, it's like, you know, for those of us who ever watched Popeye and you're eating spinach and you remember how he would get like, you know, Popeye, he would get really big and, and that, but that's what the word does for us. It's like, whoa, and the enemy knows that. So he wants you to be distracted. He wants you to, to, you know, well, I know the word in my mind. That's baloney. Each day we need to get before the presence of the Lord, decree the word of the Lord, because God is encouraging us to be endued with power and strength. Sometimes all we talk about is what's wrong. Come on, let's start speaking about what God can do. It's, it's a strategy that works. So here we see that, and I love this, in Mark chapter 10, whoo, I love this portion, and this is about uh, Bartimaeus, and it says, and they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho, his disciples in a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, a son of Timaeus, was sitting at the roadside. Let me just say this about the blind Bartimaeus. He had to get like a permit in order to sit there, okay? So he, it was a done deal. This guy's blind, and he was a beggar. All right, and it says, and when he heard, again, when he heard the sound of faith, when he heard the sound of authority, when he heard the sound of breakthrough, it said it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to shout saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me now. And so what happened to religious and many severely censored and reproved him, telling him to keep still and keep quiet. I'm going to tell you something. As you grow in your faith, the stronger you get, you're going to have people tell you you're a fanatic, you're ridiculous. Some of you are even thinking about that me right now. This is crazy. No, I'm telling you right now, we need to get to that point because he was at such a desperate place. He's saying, listen, you're not blind. I'm blind. I can't see, but I want to see. And Jesus is saying that he's my healer and I'm going to pull on that and I'm going to trust God for this breakthrough. And so it says here, and many shut him up. They're saying, shut up, Barton May. It said, come on now. But he kept on shouting all the more, all the more. We're going to release the word of the Lord to the world. We're going to release the word to what's going on out there that they're trying to twist and pervert our country and trying to pervert the things and the promises of God where we're, we have to submit to critical race theory and the trash that they're teaching in, teaching in the school. No way. We are a mouthpiece and we have to to speak up and so he said don't tell me he says I'll shout all the more I'll decree the word all the more because when it's in faith and you're walking in that authority it shatters the plans of the enemy and it says here you son of David he says you have per mer uh, pity on me and mercy and Jesus stopped and said call him see Jesus the currency of heaven is faith Jesus stopped it got his attention that's what it is. God, so the enemy knows that. He knows how to, you know, oh, well, you know, it's been 12 years. Who cares? I know in the midst of it, it's hard, but you waited this long. Now you're going to give up? 
Don't give up. And says, and Jesus stopped, and, and he said, and they called the blind man, telling him, take courage, get up, he's calling you. Yeah. Now, and what he did, he threw off his outer garment. That represented his identity. He's like, I'm getting rid of this. I am not blind. I'm getting rid of this. We need to get rid of identity, lies that we have believed that have kept us in bondage. I am the healed of the Lord. I am, my mind is sound. See, we need to speak these things over ourselves. And it says here, he leaped up and, Je and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? Now, don't you think Jesus knew he was blind? But see, we need to be, uh, you know, declare the word. We need to say what we want. We need to decree it. We need to speak it. Jesus, this is what I want. Not you know. No, this is what I want. And he said to him, the blind man said, Master, let me receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has healed you. And at once he received his sight and accompanied Jesus on the road. There are so many scriptures that the Lord has for us to meditate on. Like in Luke 137, that was one of the ones when I first got saved. There were so many messed up things happening. In, the, in that scripture, it says in Luke 137 that with God, nothing, nada, nothing, nand, nothing shall be called impossible. Nothing. What does nothing mean? Nothing. Nothing shall be called impossible, right? But we look at certain things. Well, God can heal that, but he can't heal this. God can do this, but he can't heal this. And listen, I know, and I, I'm not making light of situations that people have gone through. But then ask him, what's the strategy that I'm not hearing from you that needs to make, cause things to shift? That's it, that's it. And let me just say this. I just thought of this. Sometimes in the past when I've ministered about this, people have mistaken what I'm saying and thinking that you cannot go to a doctor you can't take medicine. I am not saying that at all, at all. A lot of times you have to go to a doctor, right? The Lord can use the doctors to help heal you, right? But you have to hear from the Lord. You have to hear the strategy of whatever God has given you. Luke was a physician who wrote the gospel. So I'm not opposed, we're not opposed to that. The bottom line is you have to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you and that don't feel ashamed. You know, if you're going to a doctor, so what? You're still trusting the Lord for your healing, right? So, but as you keep developing your faith, you know, you just hear whatever the spirit of the Lord is saying. So I just wanted to make sure you understand that we are not opposed to medicine here. And, uh, but I want to get to a point for me where, you know, I, I see this suddenly is like that of, of healing. I haven't seen that totally yet. I've seen a lot of healings. We prayed for some guy who died in a restaurant. And he came back to life. We experienced that. We've seen miracles in our own family, in our own bodies. But I want to see it consistently, right? Don't you? I mean, that's for all of us. I want to constantly see it. I'm, I, I am believing that kids, people with ADD, ADHD, mentalists like that, they're going to get healed like that. Why not? What about a cancer-free zone like that? What about different ailments that they're like, oh, well, you know, if they have a mental issue, that's a different problem. Who says? Jesus says that with God, nothing shall be called impossible. Nada. It's, it's, it's a done deal. That's what the word of the Lord says. So we can either intellectualize the situation that we're in or we're going to trust God. See, that's, 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 the, that's the battle with our flesh. But we, for those of us, I mean, listen, he calls the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, right? And there's things, he says, you know, we, we, as we, we, we decree the word of the Lord, it's supposed to accomplish that which is sent out to do. Now, there are situations, you know, there, there are casualties of war that happen, right? But we never give up. We never give up. And so God wants us to be close to him. He's saying, listen, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I want you to know that I've got my arms wrapped around you. I've got the, the hairs upon your head numbered. I'm bottling up your tears. I know it all. See, that's, that's the relationship he wants us to have with him. I'm telling you, it comes alive. Our walk is alive with him. Yes, my husband, and it was quoted, Lisa quoted, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yeah, stuff happens. But either we're going to go through it getting beat or we're going to go through it pressing through you know somebody said when you're going through hell keep keep going don't stop keep going come on stuff happens to us so it doesn't mean i remember when i first got saved i honestly thought that oh i'm a christian now we're praying the word we're never going to have a problem 
I said, Lord Jesus, <laughs> I have to have a long talk with you here. But, you know, I did. I really believe that. I really thought that we wouldn't. Did anyone ever believe that or is it just me? I just thought, like, I am a Christian and I am not having any problems whatsoever. Well, how many of you know that's not true? <laughs> I, I can share a whole boatload of stuff. But, but, you know, that's the faithfulness of God. So I want to encourage you. Look at your hands right now. You, you guys have healing hands. And it's by faith. When I used to pray for people, I didn't know where half, half the scriptures were. I would just, the Bible says you're supposed to get healed. Come here. And I would pray. And they would get healed. Honest to God. And I didn't even know where the scripture was. But you see, the Lord will use us. It's just that child likeness. What? <laughs> said, and if you don't come here, you're going to need more healing. <laughs> so anyway, I just want to encourage you. You have healing hands. Go out there. If you see somebody, just, just say, listen, I'm, I'm practicing. I'd love to lay hands on you. <laughs> Not that kind of hand. I just want to pray for you. Can I pray for you? You know, just, just keep doing it every day. Go out and see if there's somebody that you can pray over or speak a word of life into them. Get them saved. Come on. That, you want to get your gifts developed? Listen, you could go to 452 ministry schools, but it's until you activate and do it. That's how you grow. It's, it's important to learn the word, but you need to do it. When I got saved, I just started praying. I said, come here. This is, says this says you're supposed to get healed. Come over here. And I would pray. Honest to God, when they would get healed, I was just as floored as they were because it works. Now, don't get discouraged. The first four people that I did pray for in the hospital did die. But after that, listen, you don't give up. After that, many were sent home. <laughs> so... You know, but you keep on going, but that's how your gift is developed. You keep on praying. We prayed for some guy that they said they gave him 24 hours to live, and he had a shunt in his head, and he had gotten listeria, and they said it was really, really serious. We went, we prayed over him, spoke in tongues, just kept praying over him, and um, he was sent home the next day. And then he called my husband, and he said, this is Jacob, you know, the guy that you raised from the dead. <laughs> he said, I still have double vision. He said, you guys need to still pray for me. So he came to church, and other people, uh, some of our uh, people on the healing team prayed for him, and his eyes got restored. He didn't have double vision anymore. See, it's not a superstar thing. It's for each and every one of us. Amen? So let's stand up. Amen. So how many of you need healing here today? Okay. So you all see the, the hands raised. Now, what did I just say? We all have healing hands. And I want you... Whoever's near, or if you feel led, like if you see somebody across the room, you want to pray or give them a word, do it. But I want you to pray for them, okay? Because we have to keep activating our gifts. Amen? So, Lord, we just thank you that you're our healer. Your word says that you are Jehovah Rapha. And, Lord God, we thank you that we have an impartation of wholeness and healing. Lord, you said that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So, Lord, we just impart that. We loose that encouragement. Lay hands on the sick. The word of the Lord says they shall recover. And so, Lord, we just thank you for your healing presence that's here. For every hand that's raised. For everyone that needs healing. Father, we send forth your word over to each and every person. We take authority over all spirits of infirmity and affliction. Lord, we bind every work of the enemy. We command healing in Jesus' name. Lord, your word says that by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. It's a done deal. And so, Lord, we just thank you that the, the, the many are here, that they're healed of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, keep praying. And for those of you that need to leave, Lord, we just bless each and every person here. We just thank you for open heavens. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us and you have commissioned us and you have imparted over to us, oh God, your unction and your anointing, your dunamis power. And Lord, that we are a people of power and might because of the spirit of the Lord within us. So Lord, I release that. We bless each and every person here and we decree that you are the healed of the Lord and you have healing hands in Jesus' name, amen.